What determines if a fossil is a transitional fossil? To put it briefly and simply, a transitional fossil exhibits traits or characteristics of two separate species. There are many things we can examine to find these variations in a fossil, including studying the bones themselves. This video will address some of these subtle but significant differences in bone structure, which point to the fact of human evolution. So let's meet our first fossil. This is Australopithecus africanus, an extinct hominid that lived two to three million years ago. One indicator of human evolution that sets us apart from chimps and other apes is bipedalism, the fact that we walk upright on two legs instead of dragging our knuckles and walking on all fours. We can determine if a species is bipedal or quadrupedal by noting the location of the hole on the underside of the skull, where the spine comes through to connect the brain to the rest of the body. This hole is called the foramen magnum, and as we can see in this picture, it is located nearly at the center of the skull for human beings, whereas chimpanzees have it closer to the back of their skull. On the skull of Australopithecus africanus, the foramen magnum is closer to the center than it is for a chimp, but is not quite as centered as we find in modern humans. Australopithecus africanus was adapted to bipedal posture that is similar to humans, not the quadrupedal posture we find in apes, which would have been quite painful and uncomfortable with the head sitting straight on its neck and shoulders. Another indicator of bipedalism in the Australopithecines is found in the shape and structure of the pelvis. The chimpanzee pelvis is tall and slender in comparison to the human pelvis. In this image, we also see that the leg bones of chimps come straight down from the pelvis, while human leg bones are angled out from the pelvis. Australopithecus has the same angled leg bones and a pelvis that is not as tall as a chimp's, but does flare out slightly at the top like a chimp pelvis. So they were bipedal and had some bone structure similar to humans. Is there anything that connects them to apes, though? Say hello to Australopithecus afarensis, another extinct hominid that you actually met a little while ago in one of the pictures comparing pelvises. This species is about 3 to 4 million years old and has some features of its skull that do reflect those of apes. The red highlighted area of the skull is known as the ascending ramus. Note how much wider and taller it is on gorillas and afarensis when contrasted to the ramus of the human skull. Here we see the human mandible compared with the mandible of a howler monkey, chimpanzee, and orangutan. The supraorbital ridge is basically the eyebrow region of the skull, and we find a very pronounced one on Australopithecus, just as we find on modern chimps. However, this ridge is extremely small on humans, apparently replaced by our enlarged frontal lobe. Both the supraorbital ridge and the ascending ramus aid chimps and other apes in their strong chewing ability, so it is not surprising that these features diminished on humans who became less and less dependent on chewing hard or tough substances. Paranthropus boisei was an early hominid that lived from 2.6 to 1.2 million years ago. On skulls of the males, we may notice a very defined sagittal crest, which is the bony ridge mohawk that sits atop the skull. This crest is present on animals that have strong jaw muscles for chewing, like the gorilla and the orangutan. It is entirely absent from modern human skulls. Several creationist ministries have pointed out that similarities do not prove evolution. But after so many similarities become clear, at what point is it reasonable to suspect a connection? Why would God allow so many similarities linking apes and humans if there were no evolutionary transition? Keep in mind that this video only covers one very narrow perspective of viewing the evidence for human evolution, but still we have seen six distinct characteristics that connect transitional hominid fossils with both apes and modern humans. Add this to DNA evidence, the presence of vestigial structures, the geographical evidence confirming the location and time of the fossils, as well as other pieces of evidence, and the suggestion of coincidence becomes almost unthinkable. Evolution should not be about religion or irreligion, it should be about looking at the facts and the evidence, and the evidence shows how bones support human evolution. Thanks for watching. Please rate and or comment if you enjoyed this video.